So I tell them where I'm from. My name is Rolando Ramos. I'm from the Bronx, New York. You know the vibes. Come from the big city, Big Apple. You never sleep out there. You know, I come from a really uh, broken family, you could say. I'm an adopted kid. My aunt, you know, thank the God she, she adopted me, her and my uncle, when I was born. It took them a year to adopt me, but you know, they took care of me and uh, I have nine other siblings. My childhood was pretty, pretty rough in a way. You know, growing up, uh, we didn't have, you know, the money that a lot of people had to be able to do things like. You know, we have money to pay the rent, light bills, and the main priority that, 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 that you could pay for, you know. But other than that, we didn't have money like to, to buy clothes every two weeks or every month, like. It's hard to vision, envision your goals when, when all you see is violence, when all you see is drugs, when all you see is garbage on the floor, when all you see is people letting you know that you can't do it. So that's, a, that's what we dealt with a lot growing up in the Bronx. I would say the only hardship is really being from the, from the ex, but it made us. It made us who we are. I didn't know I was adopted at the time when I was young, you know. Uh, my real mom, uh, she came and knocked on the door. I was, I think I was believe I was just graduating uh, elementary school and knocked on the door. And I remember my brother opening the door like, who is this? Like asking my aunt. Yo estaba venía muchos problemas cuando él nació y se lo dejé a mi hermana, lo dejé en el hospital y mi hermana lo recogió. De ahí mi hermana lo crió porque yo estaba en vicio y después me recuperé, regresé para atrás a ver si ellos me asustaban para atrás. You know, when I got to high school, I remember uh, meeting my friend called, his, his name is El, uh, Elvin Reyes. He, uh, him and this other kid named Colorado, they got me on the, ba on, the, on the baseball team. And we had practice. It was a good day outside. And I thought we were supposed to have practice outside. And I made a mistake of not reading the note and not following direction. And I ended up just going outside, thinking it was outside baseball. And one of the guys asked me like, hey, uh, all the baseball players up upstairs, like they in it, they actually, in, uh, in the other gym, like having uh, batting practice. And then as I was giving him a pound and we was talking, we had black and white cameras at the time. They thought I was handing him something. Obviously, he probably was rolling up a joint or something. And I did probably see the joint in his hand, but I didn't think much of it. All the school safety, security, and then they started rushing the field. And I'm like, what's going on? They grabbed us up, put it inside the school. And my dean came up to me. He's like, hey, uh, are you off the team? I'm like, what do you mean I'm off the team? It's so like you was outside, you handed him off something, and you just off the team. So once he said, you can't play, and baseball was like basically my life, I just stopped. At the time, I started going from a straight line, and you can say I started curving to the negativity that my mom didn't want me to do. So when I started doing that, I got lost. I got lost in the sauce, like right away. I started hanging around with people that, that, that was in gangs, I started, Making a wrong decision, like not paying for my train fare, my bus fare, getting chased by cops outside the buildings because I'm loitering with other people, like just being too many people in one building, trespassing. You know, I'm jumping roof to roof, getting down through fire skates. I'm just doing things that I wasn't doing before. The more he played, the more he wanted to learn. And he came 
to be one of my favorite students because the way he wanted to learn, he wanted to learn because he told me that he would like to be a coach like me. Let's go, get in there, get in there, get in there. Go, Sammy. All right, Jay, Jay, stay there, stay there, stay there. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Hands, hands, Pay the hands, Pay, hands. Baseball was our outlet. Baseball, baseball was our sport to just get away from all of that. Bro, when we was on the baseball field, we was, it was big smiles, it was joy, it was, we was jolly. Like, uh, we didn't have to worry about nothing but playing the game. Probably my happiest moment like in life was like me being able to like go out and like have some type of freedom for myself without being guided by my mom and actually going to parties and hanging out with friends that I wanted to hang out and choosing what was right and what was wrong for me instead of having somebody else guide me throughout life. These are my brothers right here, man. Yes, All right, sir, man. Yes, put them on, put them Yo. on. Yo, Let him know who saved his life. Yeah, my right boy's here. right here, man. College, my son was about to die. We oh walked in the room, God. saved my boy's life, you heard? <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. Yo, that's a throwback. That's a throw, throw back, you heard? For real. Stuff happens out here, you know, growing up out here. Like, you just get caught up in the streets, you know? And um, I feel like that's that happened to Rolando first and a lot of people. The opportunity to help someone get out of where we from it, it like was, it was there for me, you know what I'm saying? So I just told them like, yo, come bro, we out to the school. And like a couple months later, he got accepted and shit and we just went. We went for it and we was in, we was in Iowa Lakes for a whole year. He was my roommate. <laughs> That's when we got even closer. But when we got back to the ex, it was just the same old problems, the same old things. So it's a cycle, you're not, you're not gonna develop or you're not gonna grow until you get out of it, out of there, you know? I, what I always say is like, you gotta be comfortable when you're most uncomfortable. So after two years of being in a community college of, at Minnesota West, uh, and me being back and forth from St. Cloud to Worthington, because I used to party a lot in St. Cloud, it was like, St. Cloud is more like a, a, like a Manhattan, New York, type of vibe for me. Like it was a bigger city, it was more to do. And I had a couple friends out here from partying. And so I just like decided like to apply for a couple jobs, which I ended up applying for the district uh, school job. I'm at the school, I'm working. I'm getting different numbers calling me. So I'm like, it's probably a scam or something. I remember looking at my phone, I got a phone call from one of my family members, I picked up the phone, and I was like, what's good? They was like, yo, uh, yo, Kevin died. I said, what? They was like, I'm not playing with you. Like, he, he, he died. Like, I'm like, how? I just remember saying how. And when I said how, it's like my legs just noodle on me, and I just dropped on my knees. And I just remember screaming like, nah, nah. Hell nah, like this shit cannot be true. And I remember one of these, this one girl from she was an eighth grader. Uh, she came and grabbed me. She was like, Ramos, you good? Ramos, you good? I'm like, nah, nah, my cousin died. I'm like, I can't believe this. This is not true. I was like, no, no, no. And then I knew he was high. Like he, 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 he used to take like narcotics, like pills, like, like heavy pills. And I feel like that probably was part of his death, even though they couldn't find out what was wrong. But I think that really, like, from there on, changed me on how I view kids and how I view life, period. So it just made me a stronger person. It made me take life a little more serious. It made me want to help others more. It made me not want to fail, and it made me want to change my family for the good. Yeah, I just didn't want to talk about it. I got your voice stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. Replaying all the words you say. Mm -hmm. I would have never expected that was the last time I'd ever hear you speak.
speak again I can't piece together my heart We were so close but you're so far And every day I fall apart Wonder when this pain is gonna end Me being adopted not me and my, my dad, not knowing who he is. Having my mom, you know, walking, up, walking out my life for just, you know, her personal reasons. I always understood that you can't hold grudges against things like that. Me losing my cousin, I didn't take that as some, my life is over. He always pushed me to be better. So him doing that and being my younger cousin, I want to do everything that we talked about when we was kids. And everything that we talked about, I've been accomplished. And it's mind blowing, knowing that everything that I said, I have done so far. And I still have more on my checklist to accomplish. There's gonna be a lot of bumps in a row, and there have been a lot of bumps in a row for me. But I'm not gonna allow that to drag me down. And no one should allow that to drag themselves down. They should just push for more. But at least you're not hurting them. I'm gonna fight for you, but you gotta fight for me. And when I'm saying fight for me, you look at me and talk to me so I can fight for you. Don't fight against the ref. You've been doing good.